Secretary as Prime Minister representative to the UN says that since its occupation of Syrian Golan in 1967, Israel has displaced around half a million of its inhabitants and confiscated their lands. And Syrian Arab Army units continue to pursue terrorists, inflicting heavy losses upon them. The U.S. National Center for Combating Terrorism admits the increase of terrorists who travel to Syria to, find along, to fight along armed groups. Good afternoon, this is News in English. Syria's permanent representative to the UN in Geneva, Dr. Faisal al hamwi said that since its occupation of the Syrian Golan in 1967, Israel has displaced around half a million of the native population and has been systematically violating the rights of the ones who remained, in addition to confiscating the lands of displaced citizens and giving them to Israeli settlers, imposing the Israeli identity on Syrian citizens of Golan and punishing those who defy its to defy it with life imprisonment. Speaking in a statement at the United Nations Economic and Social Council meeting being held in Geneva, al Hamwi said that there are still Syrian captives who, which have been detained for more than 28 years in Israeli prisons in inhumane circumstances. Syria's representative added that since two years ago, some countries have diverting a number of UN organizations from their noble goals and purposes, pushing them to ignore human rights violations in occupied areas, particularly in Palestine and the Syrian Golan, all while these organizations race in unprecedented manner to take biased decisions against Syria in implementation of the instructions of certain countries that are complicit in shedding Syrian blood. He concluded by calling upon the international community to pressure Israel to adhere to its international obligations, stressing that Israel's violations must not be overlooked. Earlier, the UN Economic and Social Council adopted a new resolution by a majority of 43 votes to two on the socio-economic repercussions of the Israeli occupation on the living conditions of the Israeli people, of the Palestinian people, excuse me, and the Arab population in Golan. Secretary General of Hezbollah Party in Lebanon, Hassan Nasrallah, said that the Lebanese resistance is strong and deep-rooted in the public will and is massively supported and loved. Therefore, it is unbreakable. In a televised speech, Nasrallah said that those who seek to break the resistance will fail because it embodies popular will combined with faith. He asserted that protecting the Lebanese people is one of the primary goals of the resistance, stressing that Israeli threats are the biggest challenge facing Lebanon. Nasrallah noted that the United States cannot provide guarantees to Lebanon against Israeli threats because the U.S. is prepared to give up anything and anyone for the sake of Israel, adding that the U.S. can no longer impose whatever it wants on the world. He affirmed that the presence of the resistance in Lebanon seeks to confront the country's enemies. Therefore, it is natural for the enemies to target the resistance because it foils their blots and walls. In local news, Patriarch John X, the elegy of Antioch and the whole East, for the Greek Orthodox Church said that Syria is the land of coexistence, tolerance and amity, and that the Syrians are one family. During a religious mass at the Church of Our Lady in Balmana, in village in Tartus, countryside, Patriarch Yazaji prayed for peace and security in Syria, affirming that Syria will remain always unbowed and will always be the land of amity and coexistence. Patriarch Yazaji expressed confidence that the Syrians will work hand in hand for enhancing national unity and bringing back joy and smiles to all Syrian people. In field development, Syrian army units destroyed this morning two weapons warehouses used by Jabhat al-Nusra, a Nusra front terrorist in Latakia's northern countryside, killing a number of non-Syrian terrorists, including Jordanian, Libyan and Somali. A military source said that missiles and heavy machine guns were also destroyed inside the terrorist group's dens in the villages of Al-Qastal and Saqiyat al-Kard, killing all the terrorists inside them 
including two Jordanians, Libyan, Iraqi, and Yemeni nationality holders. In Aleppo and its countryside, army units continue to pursue armed terrorist groups. An army unit failed and foiled a terrorist attempt to infiltrate from Hananul Cemetery to a Safa area in Karmel Jabal to attack an army position. Army units killed numbers of terrorists in Aleppo city and its countryside, destroying their constructions and a den they were using for rigging vehicles with explosives in the farm of Tal Rifat town in Aleppo northern countryside. A terrorist group's attempt to infiltrate from the direction of the electricity company to Al Sheikh Said area in Aleppo city was thwarted, leaving most of the terrorists killed and injured. Units of the Syrian Armed Forces carried out a series of qualitative operations against the armed terrorist groups in Hasaga city, inflicting heavy losses upon them. An official source said that the operations resulted in killing and injuring a number of terrorists and destroying their weapons in the area of As-Siha, Twaini, Al-Khama'il, Qana, Al-Karmi, and Al-Sa'ab Al-Janubi area in Hasaka countryside. The National American Center for Fighting Terrorism admitted that increase in terrorist numbers coming from Europe and the United States heading to Syria to fight with the armed terrorist groups there. The Iranian Press TV website reported the center's director Matthew Walson in at Aspen, at Aspen excuse me, Security Forum in the American state of Colorado as uh, saying that Syria became a field for the jihadists from all over the world, adding that some of the Europeans and in rare cases, some American fighters are heading to fight in Syria with the armed terrorist groups. Wasson warned that the danger is now coming from these terrorists who travel to Syria as they will be more extremists and well trained. Then they will be back as part of a worldly jihad movement to Europe and properly to the United States. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region, and to view this news bulletin again, you can visit our website in English, www.syrianonline.sy. More news about finance and economy in our economic news after the break with Narima Qassam.